Excellent. So uh, again, my name is Andrew Hawthorne. I'm a senior product marketing manager here at VMware. Um, I'm with Jeff Spazzetti, principal product manager for VMware. We're going to get uh, to about 10 slides in hopefully 15 minutes. And then after we uh, get through that, um, we'll go to a demo of uh, uh, VMware Zimbra 7. Uh, we're going to be demoing the collaboration server today, and particularly the end user web client. Um, but we'll talk about uh, new administration features, etc., um, that uh, hold true for the entire platform. So uh, with that, I um, want to talk first about the vision. Um, where we are going, not just with uh, VMware 7, uh, with VMware Zimbra 7, but uh, on into the future and how we're integrating um, into the entire end user computing stack at VMware. We've talked to a number of customers, perhaps hundreds, um, about where they want to go with their uh, computing vision and uh, found especially a, a need for uh, getting more of an end user computing uh, perspective, becoming a lot more um, uh, driven by what end user expectations are and making applications and, uh, uh, and technologies much more available to end users, particularly around uh, the proliferation of devices. Uh, users increasingly want to be able to bring their own device into the workplace, um, to be able to access uh, information, um, their personal and shared data, be able to have um, uh, a, a, an access to a variety of different applications, um, all within inside of the uh, devices that they prefer, um, and not be locked down by the desktop and not necessarily be um, locked down under inside of a VPN or um, uh, but still have the, the kind of the IT administrator still needs the capabilities to be able to control that access um, and provide the levels of security that are necessary. So some of those end user requirements as I had mentioned earlier are the kind of anywhere anytime access um, that easy access to applications and data from the cloud um, so that you have the capability of being able to access not just cloud applications but also applications inside of the data center. Um, to have that open data between applications so that applications can share data um, so they don't necessarily have to um, launch an entirely different application in order to get um, small bits of information. You can get some of those information from web services in particular. And then to have multi-point applications to application, uh, multi-point um, access points to applications. So that, again, you can have a very interwoven application set uh, that enable you enable the user to get uh, um, the kind of information that they need in the, in the time frame and in the context uh, that they most need it. And then lastly is to have those tools for aggregating and prioritizing information. We're deluged with information today, and we really want to have the capabilities of being able to quickly sort that information, prioritize it, um, aggregate it in the ways that make best sense for us, um, and not necessarily uh, follow the rules uh, associated with a lot of applications today um, around their uh, uh, data splurge. Um, on the administrative side, uh, what administrators are really seeking today are much more simplified management. Um, SAS has really dictated uh, a different way of operating, um, which is much more self-service, allowing users to do things like run their own reports and define their own reports, um, auto updates so that you know when there's an update um, and you can instantly, with a couple of clicks, be able to access that information. Have very fast deployment, so very quick turnaround times for um, applications. Um, and then still having that security and, com and compliance with the authentication, the policy control. And then lastly is the deployment flexibility to be able to deploy it, deploy it in a private cloud or in a public cloud or in a hybrid cloud between the two. So we see a blending between the public cloud and the private cloud. Um, we see much more information uh, being shared between uh, how we access information uh, from a personal perspective and also how we access information from the private cloud. Um, and uh, similarly, on a business front, we see much more information being shared between um, the public and the private cloud. IT as a service is really um, creating a different uh, mechanism for interacting with, uh, um, with information, regardless of where, where that information exists. Access and policy control, um, personal and shared data, applications, and then containers are all being uh, stored inside of the, uh, of, of the public and private cloud. Um, so that you get access to cloud-based information much easier. What this is essentially forcing is uh, a need for both freedom and control. End users want freedom, IT administrators want control. 
what VMware, the, the vision behind VMware is to integrate these applications um, using uh, a number of different products. Um, Project Horizon is a cloud-based management service that uh, enables IT managers to um, uh, broker user access uh, and uh, to a wide range of resources like applications and virtual desktops. Um, it really is around IT, uh, it's around identity and, and, uh, um, and access management. VMware Zimbra, which we'll talk about today, um, obviously has that um, personal and shared data, so you can access that information um, uh, very easily in a cloud-based infrastructure. Um, VMware and ThinApp uh, provide that, ac um, that access to, um, to applications so that you can have those uh, applications distributed and, and provisioned in ways that uh, IT administrators make sense. And then VMware View and, and uh, uh, MVP, which is the mo mobile virtualization platform, provides those kind of containers that are necessary for proliferating these applications on mobile devices. And you'll hear more about both MVP and Project Horizon um, as we move forward in the next few months. But uh, rest assured, they're uh, coming together in a unified operation, as you can see um, over on the left-hand side, where that proliferation of, de of devices is really driving a different user experience um, around enterprise collaboration and, and an application portal um, combined so that you can get the access to multiple different applications simultaneously. We'll talk a little bit more about this in the demo, um, especially in the way that we use, obviously, the way that we use Zimlets and being able to access multiple applications simultaneously. And then also in the administration, having a single, a single pane of, of, uh, um, of win a single window to be able to access and, and provision and, uh, and administer uh, these multiplicity of applications in a single, um, in a, in a single environment. Um, that tends to be, you know, uh, especially around provisioning, um, it tends to be a particularly difficult problem as you attempt to provision users on a multiplicity of different applications. If you have a single way of consolidating that information and, and provisioning those users and deprovisioning them um, as they become uh, employees or as they leave the organization, that can be a, a extraordinarily helpful um, uh, administrative tool. So VM, uh, VMware Zimbra is gaining significant momentum. Uh, 66 paid mailboxes now. I think the last time we did uh, an announcement was around 50 million, so some very significant traction in terms of overall paid mailboxes. More than 2,000 new customers in 2010. Um, a lot of those are small and medium-sized businesses, but we've also gained in government and in large businesses as well. Um, over 200,000 organizations are now using Zimbra as SaaS. This is a huge number and one that continues to grow, but uh, we, we continue to get great traction with our business hosters, especially compared to our competition. And then we have now more than 4,000 registered community members, people who are actually active and involved in our forums, who are participating in the open source environment uh, in a very productive and healthy way that uh, improves our, um, our code and our community in a, in a great way. Uh, again, we're, we're now deployed in over 110 countries. Um, we have uh, some very large businesses, H&R uh, Block, Autobase is a new one, um, in the SMB and SME space, uh, Rotec, Skype are a couple of new ones. Um, in the government space, the Office of the Director of National um, Intelligence is a brand new one for us as well, as well as the City of Paris, Purdue University, MIT, um, and then some additional service providers in Orange, Cable and Wireless, et cetera. So uh, a lot of great momentum uh, continues uh, uh, in, our, in the space. We've uh, continued to gain customers in, uh, in all of the segments that we're really focused in on. So let me give a brief overview for people who aren't very familiar with Zimbra. It is a server-based uh, environment. Does That server-based environment allows us to be able to have the kind of uh, scaling and, and storage that uh, is required to support thousands or tens of thousands of mailboxes and uh, uh, thousands of messages inside of our mailboxes. That's the way that people use mail today. Um, it's not really in the form of uh, the, the old paradigm of read and delete. Um, we tend to accumulate a lot of messages and go through those messages on, a, uh, on, on an irregular function. Um, that server-based deployment also allows us to have much faster search capabilities um, compared to our uh, uh, traditional Microsoft Out Exchange and Outlook uh, kind of environments. The functions that we provide are mail, address book, calendar, tasks, briefcase. Now that briefcase functionality is very important. 
that is where you enable the kind of uh, access to those personal files um, very much like an enterprise Dropbox, enabling for uh, organizations to still have the security and control over those files, but enabling much better sharing. And we'll talk about a little bit of this in the, in the, uh, in the demonstration. But uh, in that briefcase functionality, we've done things like version control and uh, check in and check out that really enable for much better sharing of information rather than sending it. We have two clients. The web client is the one that we're going to be demonstrating in a second. That's where 90% of our usage comes from. Um, obviously, it's multi-platform, multi but multi-browser um, enables you to get access into, uh, into your mail, calendar, address book, et cetera, um, from any machine at any time. Uh, and then the Zimbra desktop, which is also multi-platform, but enables you to have that online, offline access uh, to your uh, data and information. Um, so that you can take it on the road and, uh, and still have all of the rich uh, capabilities that you would have. The great thing about our deployment is that it is, uh, um, it is the exact same user interface between the two. You don't have to learn a new interface between them. If you compare this to Outlook Web Access or other uh, similar applications, um, there's a very significant feature delta between um, Outlook and Outlook Web Access. One is very much more of a mail client. Ours is very much a rich, um, interactive, Ajax-based client. We also, however, support uh, a variety of other um, uh, uh, a variety of other email clients. Microsoft Outlook, obviously, Apple Desktop, and then other clients like Eudora, Thunderbird, etc. We have support for both Active Directory and the Exchange Server. Um, this allows us to have a unified uh, global address lookup uh, with Exchange and uh, allows us to be able to do things like have shared free busy information so that I can find uh, uh, out when an individual is available and that individual can find out when I'm available. Simply, um, even if I'm in Zimbra and they're in Exchange, we can uh, easily share that kind of information. Um, and do so uh, here at VMware, for instance, um, all the time. And then we have perhaps one of the widest variety of uh, uh, mobile devices available today, um, from the iPhone to the BlackBerry. We'll talk a little bit more about our BlackBerry support in a second, um, Android, Windows, et cetera. Um, a lot of this comes from our open source environment, uh, our open source background, which enables us to really uh, go after testing of mobile devices in a much easier way. So what are the themes driving VMware's Zimbra 7? First is around productivity, openness, and then manageability. Around productivity, it's around much more share more and send less. Using that briefcase functionality to really expand uh, the number of use cases that individuals can share information um, without having to send uh, the same document around to a number of different people uh, without uh, you know, having the kind of version control over that information. And really having it integrated inside of the same user experience rather than having it as a separate application um, that uh, isn't, isn't well integrated inside of the uh, application that they use most frequently. Um, we've made some significant advancements to the calendaring functionality um, to do better coordination of schedules, especially around large and complicated meetings with people who have very busy schedules. And we found that this is a use case that um, other uh, email vendors really don't uh, provide, uh, email and collaboration vendors don't really provide uh, great functionality around, so we've uh, really significantly improved um, our calendaring, especially around uh, complicated meetings and, and, uh, uh, and events. And then uh, we have uh, better capabilities to being able to manage your emails more effectively. Around openness, it's um, around uh, expanded support for mobile clients, especially around BEZ um, 5.0 and, and BEZ Express 5.0. Um, much more improved SaaS application integrations. Um, we have a capability of being able to, uh, or the WebEx Zimlet, for those who are, avail who are aware of it, and we'll demo it in just a second, um, will uh, come standard now with, uh, uh, with, the pr with uh, Zimbra 7. Um, and it provides that, uh, that kind of uh, thorough integration and thorough testing that you would expect from Zimbra. And then uh, authentication and directory interoperability um, through uh, uh, Kerberos uh, SSO and, uh, and SAML, which uh, enable much better integration and directory um, authentication. 
Um, around manageability, um, much easier, uh, much simpler to deploy, manage, and update, um, especially around the appliance. Um, we have a single unified platform for the first time. Should have mentioned this earlier, but the uh, one of the big announcements here is that we are announcing not just the Zimber Collaboration Server, but we're announcing uh, Zimber Collaboration Server Appliance as well as uh, in, in beta, as well as uh, the Zimber Desktop all in beta. So we're really having a unified platform uh, and a unified offering that comes all uh, at, 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 at concurrent times. Um, and both of those will be GA within 90 days. Um, and then last is around end-user self-service model. We're really moving a lot more of the management functionality um, out of uh, IT. There still is the capability of IT of controlling a lot of these things, but um, allowing users to be able to do much more self-service um, to get the kind of uh, functionality that they need um, without having to go to IT and, and uh, creating help desk tickets, et cetera. So really tr attempting to, to move much more towards that self-service model. Again, around productivity, um, file versioning, check-in and check-out around share more and send less. Um, people search, we can now forward V cards, we can have distribution list expansion, so you can look at a distribution list and expand it and see all of the different users that are available there. Um, people search is an omnipresent search bar that uh, exists at the top of the, uh, um, uh, of, of the application that enables you to um, search the GAL uh, for any individual and, and, and other web services as well. We, we integrate it here with, at VMware. Um, for our own internal usage, uh, and we can have pictures and uh, org charts and other things that come uh, along with that general uh, people search. Um, you can manage your emails much more effectively with things like scheduled delivery, undo, operations that enable you to, uh, uh, to really clean up your inbox and, uh, and manage, your, manage those email, uh, emails much more effectively. Um, around openness, uh, BEZ 5.0 and BEZ Express 5.0 for expanded mobile um, forces, better integrations with Salesforce.com and LinkedIn, um, talked a little bit about the Caribos based SSO and SAML authentication. These enable us to um, have much better integrations with, uh, um, with third party applications. That SAML authentication enables us to have um, one login support, my one login support with other VMware. Um, applications, so very, uh, very tight integration um, with with uh, VMware products as well. Um, around manageability, seven minutes uh, to install on the appliance. Very, very quick appliance um, uh, install time. Um, those automatic updates for both desktop and appliance, so that you know exactly when there's an update that's coming. Um, one platform and end user self service um, around particularly. A good example of that is deleted item recovery for end users. And rather than steal the show, I think I might as well um, move it over to, uh, uh, to Jeff in just a second here. Let me get through one more slide. Really the idea of shared and personal data. Um, inside of our inbox, there is the uh, typical workflow of um, discovering an item, uh, aggregating that information, prioritizing that information, then acting upon it. Uh, that tends to be the typical workflow, and that's the workflow that we tend to, um, to support much better. And around sharing, it's around um, finding a document, updating it, um, publishing it, uh, so that once you've um, updated that document, you can publish it with relative ease. Um, then allowing that, that uh, document to be discovered, and then reviewed, and then lastly, updated again. So this constant uh, um, cycle of life, uh, the cycle of, uh, of workflow um, is uh, present in, in our applications and is one that uh, we're attempting to get much more um, familiar, uh, familiarity with our users and allow our users to be able to, uh, uh, to accomplish these workflows much easier. Um, those are really the, the goals behind VMware 7 um, and on future uh, to VMware Zimbra 8 and others. So what is it that we're launching? The newest version of uh, next generation email and collaboration. Again, the server, server 7, um, desktop 7 and appliance 7 all at the same time. Uh, single unified platform. Um, much better data sharing capabilities, expanded calendaring, search functionality, upgraded management features for both IT and end users. And then it's optimized for both the casual and power user. Um, establishing a platform for next generation workspace. 
Um, so very, very significant uh, additions to the functionality um, around both, uh, around not just for the end user, but for the IT administrator. Um, three, ma three major themes around productivity, openness, and manageability. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jeff. And uh, he'll run through a short demo. <clears throat> All right, thanks, Andrew. So what I'm actually going to show today is uh, the the Zimber web client and the web access, the way to access Zimber from a from a web browser. Um, so Andrew mentioned, you know, we have uh, the web client way of accessing Zimber. We have a desktop client uh, that allows you to take your data offline, and then we support a bunch of di other clients through standards, whether IMAP, POP, CalDAV, CardDAV, um, you know, really all the standard based protocols. Um, but by far the most popular way of accessing Zimber is via a browser and you know to an end user you know this is this is the workspace they live in every day um, and that's that's what we're going to demo today so uh, you know what we've done here is I'm actually in my you know Firefox browser um, I'm logged in to the to the Zimber client and um, I'm going to highlight some of the features here um, as Andrew also mentioned you know we support not you know all the most popular browsers, so Firefox, IE, Chrome, Safari, across operating system and platform, so Windows, Linux, and Mac, you know, really basically any platform or browser combination you can, you can come up with, uh, we support. And so we have the same feature set and functionality across all those different platforms. So really, you know, you know to an end user, and, and, and a, um, to an end user, the way they access Zimbra, really from anywhere they can get access to a browser, they can access the same feature functionality. Um, which is really gives people a consistent experience, and um, you know, regardless of, of how they access uh, this uh, access Zimbra. So here I am. I'm logged into into Zimbra right now. Uh, across the top, you can access the different applications inside of Zimbra. So you can access your mail, your address book, and contacts, uh, calendar. So your personal calendar, as well as uh, you know, personal appointments, meetings, and shared calendars, task list briefcase which you know is around sharing files and gives you a place to kind of have an like an online file store that you share and then managing your preferences really customizing the experience of of how you interact with this workspace um, you know so here one big thing for people who are familiar with Zimber from before um, that you'll notice right off the bat is we have a new default skin so this skin is actually called carbon um, so it's just really uh, taking advantage and, and and having a closer relationship to how um, you know the, the skin coloring and styles look uh, for VMware um, but this is all customizable so the end user can actually go and uh, configure which skin they want to use and we ship with a few different default skins out of the box but we load carbon um, you know from install but you know the end user can really customize that as well as our customers can change out the logo change out the color um, and the styles all depends on, on, on what experience they want to create for their end users but so uh, another thing you'll start noticing is as I start going through this demo, um, you know, keep in mind that I'm running this all on a browser and it's really a, uh, it will start feeling like a very rich desktop application, but it's inside of a browser. So there's a lot of stuff you can do here um, that uh, will make you forget that you're inside of a browser, browser accessing an application. So, you know, just to give you, you know, one small example of that. Of, of this rich experience is I can just show you something like I can take an email message here from Chris Smith and I can actually take it drag and drop it onto my mini calendar here in the in the bottom left I drop that email message on that date and what ends up happening is it, it brings me over to create an appointment form and actually pre-fills that appointment with Chris Smith the, the email subject the email body it went and did a free busy lookup it's providing me other times that he's available and I'm available to be able to schedule things. All that just through a drag and drop in an email on a mini calendar. And you know, overall, like, you know, that's one small capability to show you inside of the Zimber web client. But you know, just that kind of drag and drop experience, that kind of interactivity or interaction between the application is, is just some, something you'll, you'll really see as I really start getting through the features and functionalities here. So. What I'll do is actually go back and we'll start drilling into each one of the applications here in the demo. Um, so I'll first look at mail. Um, so, you know, 
first thing you'll notice here is the way my mail is organized. So I actually right now have my mail organized in conversation view. So all my messages are grouped together uh, to kind of create threaded conversations. So you can see here that um, I actually have a bunch of you know different conversations grouped together where I can look at this one here. I can open expand and it's actually related messages together into a, a conversation. So it's just a way for me to organize and look at my inbox in a way that um, groups messages together. So it's kind of easy to navigate and see things that are related. For some people, they, you know, they might be looking for the traditional message list view. We also support that. So this is kind of your message, message list view, you know, and you can have your, your newest messages on top. Right here, I have a preview pane on the bottom. I can actually go and put my preview pane on the right. I can go click on a message and then I actually have the message here in the preview pane. So really, you know, the end user can, can set up how they want to interact with their mail, whether conversation or message list, and how they want their preview panes to work. Um, so you can really kind of see, um, you know, how a user can really customize this on how they, want to, how they want to do it. One new capability we've made available in uh, Zimber 7.0, and I'll actually switch back to my conversation uh, view and uh, put the preview pane on the bottom. And so we tried to make it easier for people to manage invites that come into their inbox. And so what I have here is a, um, a meeting invite from Giorgio. And so I'll click on that. And here in the preview pane, you can actually see there's the meeting invite from Giorgio, all the invitees, and the information around the meeting. But it also included in that message uh, an embedded day view of my calendar on the day the invite is and shows me where that, that meeting is. So instead of me getting this meeting invite, switching over to calendar, and then going and coming back here and doing either accept or declining or proposing a new time, I actually have embedded calendar inside of my message. So it really just helps make things a lot easier um, when I'm getting invites in without having to switch between applications. I get a lot more information in context of the, of the invite. Another new feature we introduced with 7.0, it's, it's the ability to, to undo operations. So what I can do here is actually take a message, you know, I'll highlight this message from, from Scott. I can go and um, actually delete that message, so I'll drag and drop it onto the trash folder. And you can actually see that that um, was moved to the trash. Here I actually have the, the chance to undo that operation. So if I click undo, it actually puts his message back into my inbox. Um, so there it is right there. So I have the chance to undo operations like move or deleted items or uh, marking a message as um, you know, spam. Uh, so basically I have one chance to undo those things. You know, I can easily just you know, do the delete and move on um, and, and then the undo operation goes away. But this is just one of those convenience features that um, users asked for and, and were able to provide here in, in the, uh, the web client. Uh, a capability that's not necessarily new to Zimbra 7, but you know, and it's been around for a while, it's the ability to tag messages. And so tagging is a little bit different than flagging. So we, we support the idea of flagging messages, and that's kind of like flagging a message for follow-up. Um, so I kind of flag this conversation, and I'll take the, take the flag off. Um, but tagging allows you to actually create a way to categorize your messages, and um, you know, where you can apply a tag to a message, and you can apply more than one tag. And then you can actually do you know, really quick and convenient searches to, to see the things that have been tagged that way. So here I'll take this message from Scott, I'll right click, I'll tag the message with classes. And you can see now it actually puts the classes tag on, on Scott's message and actually shows that here in the preview as well. I can right click and add another tag and call it client ID. So now I actually have client ID tagged as well. So I can sit here and actually go and in my, my left navigation, I can click on the classes tag and it'll actually do a search of my mailbox and give me all the things that have been tagged classes. So it's just a different way to view all the messages in my mailbox and conveniently get the things that are related. Even though I might have organizationally put them in different folders, the tagging gives me a way to relate the things um, even though they're not stored next to each other. So it gives you multiple ways to, to really organize your inbox, whether through a hierarchy or through this tagging capability and then you can quickly filter and find those things just with a click here on the left navigation. So I'll go back to my inbox. And uh, another item that Andrew mentioned, it's kind of the end user self-service and the idea that a user can recover deleted items themselves. And 
Uh, but we heard from a lot of um, our customers is that you know a lot of help desk calls come from from users that have emptied their trash and want one message back, and that can be an expensive call to take to take the call to help troubleshoot and even do the restore of a single message from a mailbox. Um, just just becomes really expensive. So we actually gave the the admins the capability to turn on kind of like a, a holding place beyond the, the trash bin so that when a user empties their trash, they can actually go and the end user can go and recover items from that trash before they're actually purged from the system. So what I actually do here is I'll take this message from, from Scott, I'll delete it, and you can see here it's in my, my trash folder. And then I'll go and empty my trash and imagine it's the end of the day, I went and emptied my trash, I went home, I came back the next day, and then I realized I need that message back that, um, that came from Scott. So I actually have the ability here to recover deleted items. So I can go in, recover deleted items, and I can see there's that message from, from Scott. I actually can take that message and recover it back to my, my inbox. I close it, I can go look, and there's that message back from Scott. So an admin can control this capability and manage the life cycle and, and uh, lifetime of things of how long they stay um, in that holding place beyond trash or whether this capability is, is exposed to, to their users or not really from a class of service they can define how this gets put out there or not but you know really trying to think about how the end user can can you know really help themselves um, with with things that they normally would have to, to call IT to do. Some new capabilities we we added to mail around composing messages uh, so what I'll do is actually click new here and and highlight this for you now so I'm actually in the compose message form I'm here in the tab uh, a couple things you can do from the add attachment dialog uh, you can always browse for files and attach files and we support you know browsing for files and doing a multi you know multi select to attach more than one file at a time uh, we support attaching uh, files from a briefcase so you know briefcase where you've you know stored and shared um, files inside of this workspace you can actually attach here to email if you if you want to send those you can attach messages so you can browse your mailbox and attach messages and forward messages to people as well as now you can attach contacts so you can take contacts from the address book highlight those click attach and they actually become uh, V cards and uh, you know so it's a way for you to send uh, um, contacts around to people we now added a capability as well to support sending later so you can always traditionally compose your message. So actually, uh, we'll compose the message to Andrew. And I'll go, here are the contacts. And uh, I can send this right now just by clicking the send button, or I can actually schedule it to be sent. So I can actually schedule this message to be sent next week at uh, 137. Uh, I'll click OK. And then that message will actually be scheduled to be sent. So if I go into my drafts folder, I can see this message to Andrew is here. It has a little clock and it tells me when it's scheduled to be sent. So this is good for, for uh, people that are using email that they have a lot of uh, correspondence they send periodically, they want to queue up, uh, whether it's from a support desk perspective or from a sales perspective, they can queue up these messages and have them go out on a time basis. And they can always come back into their drafts folder and edit that schedule set and uh, either eliminate it and send it right now or um, you know cancel it altogether. And this is also admin configurable, so they can decide whether or not to roll out this feature to users from a class of service level. So it um, really all depends um, how, the, how, the, how you want to deploy Zimbra. Another capability that Andrew talked about uh, is people search. So this is really kind of thinking about the global address list that uh, Zimbra is uh, connected to. And so this could be our internal global address list, or you can configure it to connect to an LDAP server or Active Directory for the global address list. And so we just made a convenient way for you to do a people search right from the, the, the top toolbar here in the, in the web client. So actually I typed in Andrew, now I can actually see two different Andrews and I can click on Andrew and then I'd be able to see all his global address information um, right here from the, from the web client. And this is actually uh, pretty customizable. So what we've done here inside of VMware is we've um, actually implemented and integrated with our internal systems to produce uh, 
you know, the images of people as well as their org charts, and then you can navigate their org charts and then seating charts. So you can actually use our Zimlet technology to, to really customize what we show here from this people search dialog. So what I'll do is uh, switch over to address book right now and just, you know, highlight one, uh, one new feature we added in 7.0. It's the ability to forward contacts. I showed you that uh, from when I was composing a message that I was able to add contacts um, through the add attachment dialog. Here's a way when I'm actually in my, my address book, I can highlight one or more contacts. I can now right click and forward the contacts and that will go and compose the message with the vCard attachments to it. So just a different way to go about getting vCard attachments on a message. Um, either you know, you're browsing your address book or you know, previously I showed uh, showing that from the compose dialog. So actually I'll close the Compose dialog now and I'll switch over to Calendar. And this is where we made a, really a lot of enhancements here really around how you um, create appointments and schedule meetings. Uh, so we're still supporting the traditional views, whether it's your day view, your work week view, your week view, month or list views. Um, we made some enhancements to, to the different views. Uh, for example, like the list view, we now actually support you being able to put in a date range um, so you can actually go and, and easily um, you know, see appointments in a list. Um, and this actually is, is, is a good way of doing searches and seeing results. So I can actually do a search here for Greg during this date range in this list view. I'll click search and actually see meetings related to, to Greg right there. Um, so actually we'll refresh that view. I'll switch back to the work week view. Um, and you can see here, here's my work week. It shows me actually working hours. And so based on time zone, um, you know, it will adjust and show working hours. So this is set from, uh, you know, 11 to, to 8 o'clock, which is, you know, 8 to 5 um, based on time zone. Um, so you can actually see that is, is, is shaded as well. This is all configurable under preferences. So I'll go and show you that in calendar preferences. You can set what your default view you want it to be, what do you want the, the week to start on. Um, and then you can configure your work week days and hours, and it could be same set of hours for all your work week days or customize that and, um, you know, really uh, save and configure that. So how you want that shown. So back to the calendar uh, work week view. Um, another capability we added here was uh, being able to copy appointments. So here I have a project XYZ appointment. I can actually go and create copy. And what this would do is go and create a new appointment form and pre-fill the information based on what that appointment I'm, I did the copy from. So just a convenient way for you to copy appointments um, and make multiple copies of an appointment um, without having to just copy paste, copy paste uh, information. So then uh, the next thing and really the biggest thing we added in calendar, it's, it's just you know, really enhancing how you create appointments and schedule and schedule meetings. So I'll actually go and create a new appointment and I'll actually call this, you know, project status meeting. And, um, you know, a couple things to highlight here, you know, you have the ability to, to create this as a personal appointment. So not do any attendees, you know, I can add, you know, any agenda or notes um, to, this, to this meeting here. I can view the, the scheduler so I can see free busy time and um, I can save this and it's just a personal appointment in my calendar. From attendees perspective, we support uh, required as well as optional attendees. You can set location, you can set resources, <clears throat> and those things can be pulled from the GAL. Um, so you can choose uh, different locations and resources from, from the GAL. <coughs> Excuse me. As well as we support, um, this is new in 7.0, time zones on start and end times. So you can actually set and use a time zone for your start time and your end time. And this is actually good for um, people who travel a lot and might have a departure time in one time zone and a, a landing time in a different one. It's just easy for <clears throat> you to be able to set up those times here without having to do the conversion yourself. So, you know, when I want to actually go and create a meeting, what, what actually gets uh, good here is I can go and say, let's invite Andrew to this meeting. I can type in Andrew. I actually go and see um, the autocomplete results. Say Andrew Hawthorne is, is in the global address list or my address books. <clears throat> I go and select Andrew. And you can actually see it made some suggestions of, of times that are available um, that both of us um, 
are available for on this day. So today on the 9th, two and two of us are available on 3 and 3.30 and 4 o'clock for half hour time slots as well as it, it makes suggestions about rooms being available. And I can see Andrew's work hours and his uh, free busy time here. So, you know, this is, you know, just trying to make it easier for me to schedule appointments across uh, different attendees and different time zones through the scheduling wizard and through the, the uh, scheduler uh, free busy view. I can customize how these results show up here on the left. So I can actually go and customize if there's certain rooms I want to narrow down to, how do I want to take working hours into consideration, you know, you know, just so that us, uh, for people who work across different time zones, just making sure we're trying to find the intersection there and only suggest times when all of us are available, things like that. Or, you know, just turn off suggestions if I just want to go and say, I'm going to go set up this meeting. You know, you don't need to recommend anything to me. So, you know, I can easily sit now go and click send and it'll send out the meeting invite and Andrew can go and uh, when he, you know, goes into his inbox, he'll be able to accept that meeting invite. But, you know, imagine this is a project meeting where I'm not sure I have the agenda totally um, set yet or I have all the attendees I need to, to have available. I can actually now save this appointment and not send the invitation yet. And I get a little message there saying the appointment saved in my calendar. And I can actually go and, um, you know, come back to this later when I say, like, uh, have decided that there's a, a new agenda or new people I need to add. So what I can actually go is reopen this uh, appointment. It still tells me the invitations haven't been sent. And say I wanted to add uh, Jeff to this meeting. So I can go add Jeff. So now it would be myself, Andrew, and Jeff in this meeting. You can see Jeff is in a different time zone because it actually shows his working hours differently. But it does also show his free busy. It shows us the, the slot we're trying to set up the meeting for. And now it actually shows us times that are available across all three of us as well as two out of three. So in this, in this case here, I'm busy um, in these four time slots, as well as in one out of three when uh, you know I'm busy and Jeff's busy, so only Andrews are busy during those times, available during those times. So here I can actually say like, let's take the, the three o'clock time slot. It works for all of us. It'll give us a half hour. I can add um, an agenda to the, to the meeting, and now I can actually go and send the invitation out the door. So it really gives me the opportunity to do, you know, a long running meeting scheduling where I can add attendees and agenda and kind of queue up the, the meeting and prepare it before I actually send it out the door. And this is, you know, really a, a, a big advancement in, in Zimber 7 um, that we're excited about, just giving people the ability to really, you know, get a lot of control on how they schedule their meetings and, and send out those invites. And the scheduling wizard just really helps with once you have more than you know two people in a meeting you know just working across uh their time of their their availability and especially across time zones and working hours um, you put all those things together the scheduling wizard um, and uh, the working hours things uh, we're really trying to make it a lot easier for people to, to coordinate uh, meetings So uh, with about five minutes left, what I'll do is actually give you a brief picture of uh, some enhancements we made to the task application. Uh, so just a couple things we did here would, you know, would give you the ability to, to have a preview pane uh, on the top on, or the bottom or the right. Um, the ability to actually mark items as completed here in the, in the list view. So you can actually go and mark an item as completed uh, by right click or actually clicking the, uh, the toolbar. Um, and then, you know, we're supporting, which is new in, um, excuse me, in 7.0 is ability to create a task in a tab, as well as support reminders on tasks. So you can actually get a pop-up reminder, an email reminder, or an SMS reminder of, um, you know, tasks on their due date. Uh, hi I'll highlight some features in briefcase. So um, here I have, uh, you know, a briefcase where I'm actually storing files. Um, up on the on the Zimber server and so I can actually go and uh, share out briefcases and share them between different people and now I support you know new capabilities such as check in and check out as well as versioning so I can actually take a file that I, I've shared out there I can do a check out download it make changes to it I can go check in the file upload the new changes add notes to it and it will go and increment the version or I can discard check out so this is really useful when I have a briefcase shared with a bunch of different files I'm working on with multiple people. 
I can see the different checkout and check-in scenarios and the different version history. And you know, you can always go back and restore to a different version and see the notes that are associated with it. And then sharing is really easy, so I can actually go share folder. I can go share this with uh, with Jeff. I can give him viewer rights or manager rights or admin rights, um, and then he'll get a message to be able to accept this share. And then we can start collaborating on these files together and really taking advantage of check-in, check-out, and versioning. So just the last things to highlight, um, just want to highlight some of the new configuration options we're giving, giving uh, users. Um, some changes, we've, we've enhanced the way people do email signatures. So now we actually support having uh, V cards attached as, uh, as signatures uh, to your signature. So you can actually include a business card with your signature. Um, the ability to designate signatures on new messages and replies and forwards. Um, so if you have an email, um, so if you have a requirement to have a you know a disclaimer in, in your signature on all new email messages you can have a signature that has the full disclaimer on all your new messages and then on replies and forwards there might be a shorter abridged disclaimer so we gave you the, the ability to manage that from a filter perspective and being able to set filter rules uh, we support incoming filters and that's you know a traditional Zimbra Zimbra capability for messages coming into your inbox you're able to go and manage those those messages, tag them, move them to different folders and things like that. But now we added support for outgoing messages. So you can actually say, hey, with this uh, message I'm sending out the door includes a price in the subject, I'll actually tag it with a client ID tag and I will move it to uh, this folder. So I can actually create rules of not only when messages come into my inbox, but when they're leaving my inbox. So it cuts out the, the need to have to go troll your sent folder after you send a message and move it around into your, into your folder tree. You can actually have it automatically happen for you. We've added a capability to manage trusted addresses. So when you get an email address that has embedded images, um, you, know, you, you can say not to display those by default just for security reasons, but then you can actually manage domains and email addresses from people that you want to to show that, to, to show those images from by default. Uh, we talked about some of the calendar options uh, what, around work week hours and being able to configure, you know, start of the, the work week. And uh, a big, uh, a big uh, update here is really around notifications and uh, reminders. So notifications by email or SMS. So this, um, this is really useful when you're scheduling an appointment or you're scheduling a task and you set up a reminder. So you can do the reminder. Traditionally, we've had the pop-up reminder when you log into the web client, but now you can actually configure to get an email reminder as well as get a SMS reminder. So you can go and conf configure your device based on your carrier. You do a verification process. So you get the, you know, a text message on your phone. You verify that device. And then you know, basically when you go and create an appointment, what you can do, and I'll actually show that to you really quick. I'll go create a new appointment. I can go and actually say, Hey, let's configure to send me an email reminder or an SMS reminder if I configure a, a device on here. So that when this appointment time's coming up and the reminder's ready to fire, I'll get an email alert as well as an SMS text. And this is just useful for people. Um, so if they're not gonna be in front of the web client to get the pop-up, they get it on their phone. So just a really convenient thing, thing we added there. And lastly, uh, you know, really just to highlight some, some Zimlet capabilities, and Andrew talked a little bit about Zimlets, and this is kind of our way to customize and really, really um, enhance the way the, the end user interacts with the features and functionality of the web client. So, you know, we have an open platform here where people can go and really implement a Zimlet and deploy it into their, into their environment and just give people new functionality and, um, you know, and just new ways to access services and, and systems, whether they're inside or outside of the enterprise. And so just some quick examples here is uh, our, um, I actually switched to this message here, and I have the message here in my preview pane. I've actually deployed a few Zimlets that are, that are pretty interesting. One is a Zimlet that's called Yahoo Maps. So it actually can recognize addresses inside of emails. So what it does is recognizes this is an email address and if I hover over that, yep. that hover doesn't seem to be going right now. We'll come, we'll come back to that one. It would go out to Yahoo Maps and actually give me a hover over of the, um, of the, of the address uh, in Seattle. So it actually integrates with the Yahoo Maps. 
as well as we deployed a flight tracker Zimlet, so it actually recognizes flight information. So it actually highlights these things, and I can go and uh, track flight information. Um, so really, you know, just a lot of a lot of different ways you can extend and and customize customize Zimbra. Thanks for that demo, Jeff. So folks, we're about running out of time here, and wanted to take this opportunity to let you know about a great opportunity to learn a little bit more about the Zimbra 7 product, um, to get a little bit more in-depth. Uh, a lot of you have asked a lot of questions on the QA session, which unfortunately we won't be able to have on the on-demand version. But if you would like your questions followed up immediately and you do have some very specific questions on how you can deploy uh, VMware Zimbra 7, please request a free workshop. As you can see on your screen here, this free workshop is a personalized one-on-one -on -one session with you and a, and a Zimbra expert. Uh, it, it can cover the, the tiniest of details or the largest of questions. So if you'd like to attend one of these workshops, they are first come, first serve, and it's as simple as sending an email to events at Zimbra.com with a subject line of workshop. If you could be so kind as to include your name, the name of your organization, your country, and the number of mailboxes you wish to support, a Zimbra expert local to your region will be able to reach out to you uh, and answer any of your questions. So again, I wanted to thank the team for today. Um, I wanted to thank Jeff and Andrew for presenting, uh, Anoop and Greg for manning the questions on the Q&A side. Uh, I've been your host, and I would like you to, again, consider the free workshops uh, for any other follow-up questions. And with that, the Zimbra team will be signing off. Have a great day.